my dear students how are you welcome welcome to this new session and new this new session is going to speak about anti cancer agents anti cancer agents as soon as you hear this term uh, as a pharmacology chapter you get a sense of complexity in front of your mind so uh, let's try to overcome it let's try to understand and be confident about anti cancer drugs and this is why i am not starting the chapter in a monotonous uh, traditional way uh, first we are going to discuss the toxicity of anti cancer agents we'll not have classification and all those things we'll have it later so let's start with the toxicity overview of the anti cancer agents so in general when we say we are using anti cancer agents what are going to be the toxic effects i want you to understand that this is a different situation we are giving a drug in a human being in a patient the drug is not going to act on any microorganism or bacterium or virus rather it is going to act on your own cells and is going to kill your own cells you want the drug to kill your own cells but you want the drug to kill only cancerous cells and you want the drug to spare your normal cells is it possible it's a very difficult task and as you know when the drug starts acting uh is going to act on the various cells of course you can have targeted drug delivery you can have the drugs which are, which can have specific effect on the cancer cells but still uh the drug is going to act on the normal cell and who is going to be affected first which type of the normal cells are going to be affected first are the cells which are rapidly growing rapidly multiplying and naturally the the toxicity of anti cancer drugs the more brunt is to be taken by those tissues those cells inside the body which act which multiply very rapidly i hope you are getting my point this is going to help you going to take you logically to the adverse effect or to the toxicity of anti cancer agents look at that on the slide i wrote first bone marrow yes this is the most rapidly multiplying tissue and this is by bone marrow suppression is a predominant adverse effect of many anti cancer drugs bone marrow suppression on one side is going to decrease your rbc count decrease your wbc count is going to produce anemia is going to produce weakness fatigue that's right but there's going to be a leukopenia and the patient is going more going to be more susceptible to infections and then infections then management of infections if it's not cured the if the organism is resistant then septicemia so this is how the thing goes so preventing this bone marrow suppression becomes a challenge even if you can't prevent the bone marrow suppression preventing the infection is is a challenge when the patient is on anti cancer drugs so we need to know the first adverse effect that's bone marrow suppression we need to know what are the drugs which are comparatively less bone marrow toxic so that you can keep in mind i am using this drug for my patient so the chance of bone marrow suppression are comparatively less so you can see on the slide there's a list comparatively less uh, bone marrow toxic drugs is asparaginase cisplatin vincristine bleomycin and prednisone over a period of discussion of 3 or 4 sessions on anti cancer therapy Uh, i'm sure you're going to remember these names which are less bone marrow toxic drugs asparaginase cisplatin vincristine bleomycin and prednisone so that's that's the first thing bone marrow suppression let's come to the next toxicity obviously this is another rapidly growing cell that's the hair follicles they are rapidly multiplying and this is why the anti cancer drugs affect the hair follicles so you get that classical picture you know when the patient is on cancer chemotherapy and there is loss of hair what you call alopecia so the patient gets alopecia and dermatitis we move on to the next toxicity the next toxicity is vomiting and this vomiting is very characteristic many anti cancer drugs produce vomiting and this vomiting is related to the 5 hydroxy tryptamine we will discuss about it later Uh, when we go to the individual drugs the next adverse effect notable is mucositis why mucositis mucus membranes 
again this is a rapidly multiplying cell and the anti-cancer drugs are going to affect this first and this is why you get inflammation at various mucous membranes some of the notable ones is stomatitis glossitis as written on this slide then gastritis then this can this could lead to diarrhea and bleeding hemorrhages and again the mucositis may be responsible for nausea and vomiting we move on to the next toxicity and that's reticular endothelial system or immune suppression i hope you are looking at the slide because there's a list of infections here reticular endothelial system or the immune system suppression because this is also uh, rapidly growing cells when there is suppression of the reticular endothelial system when there is suppression of the immune system you become more susceptible to infection this happens hand in hand obviously with the bone marrow suppression which infections are common and which infections this patient is likely to catch number one most common is candida that's the fungal infection second one you can have deep fungal infections and the next one is herpes zoster that's a common infection next cytomegalovirus or cmv after this very important to remember is pneumocystis pneumonia pneumonia or pcp what is called pneumocystis gyrovaci the next important common infection patient is likely to suffer from is toxoplasma and lastly we need to remember the infections like deep fungal infections like cryptococcus next we move on to the next organ which is a victim is the gonads this is also a rapidly developing cell so there could be affection of the reproductive function and that becomes an important toxicity for many anti cancer agents going to the next line anti cancer agents given during pregnancy are fetotoxic are toxic to the fetus and next i am saying about uric acid the anti cancer drugs produce their various effects there's a lot of destruction of cells inside the body and large amount of uric acid produced this leads to hyperuricemia and can lead to precipitation of a gouty attack and this is why hyperuricemia so these are some of the common toxicity of the anti cancer agents uh, if someone asks you what are the toxic effects of anti cancer agents let's go through bone marrow suppression then hair follicle affection getting alopecia then predominant vomiting then there's mucositis at many mucous membranes this reticular endothelial and immune system suppression leading to susceptibility to various infections then reproductive toxicity phytotoxicity and hyperuricemia after speaking about the general toxicity of anti cancer agents we go on to discuss how to manage the bone marrow toxicity first important agent is erythropoietin this might be needed number 2 is myeloid growth factors in the form of colony stimulating factors that's gcsf and gmcsf that's filgrastim and sargramostim this might be needed then the mega karyocyte growth factor that is interleukin 11 or thrombopoietin uh, your patient might need these substances to manage and treat the bone marrow toxicity as far as dose monitoring of the anti cancer drug is concerned we have to keep a watch on what's happening to the wbc card and we need to avoid neutropenia especially granulocytes we have to avoid uh, coming less than 500 per cubic millimeter for thrombocytopenia we have to watch the platelet count and we should avoid the platelet count falling too much that's below 20000 per cubic millimeter now let's let's put on the slide once again what are the drugs which are comparatively less bone marrow suppression have a look at the slide i'm showing you on the slide uh, the first drug is cisplatin then the second one is bleomycin the third one is vincristin next l asparaginase and prednisone so you are seeing five drugs here there are five lines and what i have done on the slide is i am saying all these drugs have comparatively bone less bone marrow suppression but then what is their characteristic toxicity important toxicity is also shown in front of the drug 
Sosis platin, bleomycin, mincristine, asparaginase and prednisone are comparatively less bone marrow toxic but they have their own characteristic toxicity like cisplatin is nephrotoxic and it's also neurotoxic so it produces nephrotoxicity and neuropathy. Bleomycin produces blisters in the skin. Remember B for B produces blisters in the skin and there's another B here in the word fibrosis pulmonary fibrosis so bleomycin blisters and pulmonary fibrosis vincristin is more neurotoxic asparaginase produces pancreatitis and hypersensitivity reactions and I'm not writing anything in front of prednisone because this is very less bone marrow toxic agent and we know what are the characteristic adverse effects of corticosteroids uh, they are going to matter uh, there is no toxicity like the typical toxicity of suppressing the growth of the cells. So that's about comparatively less bone marrow suppression and these drugs are called marrow sparing agents because the bone marrow toxicity is comparatively less. What's log kill hypothesis in the anti-cancer therapy? Uh, log kill hypothesis means that the killing of the cells follows a logarithmic rule. What does it mean? This means the process of killing of cancer cells follows first order kinetics and this first order kinetic means fixed percentage or a fixed fraction or fixed proportion of the cells are killed. It, it's not some number is killed but a fixed percentage of fixed, fixed fraction of the cells are killed. So that's uh, log kill hypothesis. Now let's have a look at the cell cycle phases. What are the various phases in the cell cycle? G0 phase is called resting phase. After the resting phase, the cell passes to the phase G1 and this is called pre-synthetic interval. So it's an interval. Pre-synthetic is before synthesis. Synthesis of what? That's DNA synthesis. So before the actual DNA synthesis, you need some time for formation of the substances required for DNA synthesis. So that's called pre-synthetic interval. That's phase G1. After this, now it was pre-synthetic. So now DNA synthesis has to take place. So that synthetic phase or S phase, that's DNA synthesis. So G0, G1, then S. After DNA synthesis is done, you again need an interval. And this interval is coming after DNA synthesis. So it's called post-synthetic interval. And during this interval, there will be formation of substances required for mitosis. So the cell is preparing itself for mitosis. So once again, resting phase G0, G1 pre-synthetic, S synthesis and G2 post-synthetic. And the interval is for preparing for mitosis. So the next phase obviously is mitosis. That's M phase. So you have the G0 resting phase, G1, S, G2 and M. And let's have a look at this particular phases of the cell cycle in the form of a schematic uh, simple basic diagram uh, I'm showing you you can follow the diagram on this diagram you can see the phase G1 uh, that's the that's the beginning from the phase G0 resting the cell is entering the G1 phase and then uh, you go clockwise clockwise if you go down you get the synthetic phase that's S phase then go up clockwise then there's G2 that's post synthetic phase and then finally you have M phase that's the mitosis. Uh, there are some drugs shown on this particular slide which means that these drugs are specific for one or the two of the phases. For example if you come to the top of the slide vinca alkaloids have been shown and the arrow is pointing towards the M phase. It means these drugs are specific to inhibit M phase. Vinca alkaloids suppress the mitosis. So Vinca alkaloids M phase. Ne the next drug which you see on the slide is bleomycin and bleomycin arrow is going to phase G2. So bleomycin peptide antibiotic is specific for phase G2. Next if you come down there's podophyllins and the podophyllin arrows are going towards two phases that's G2 phase as well as S phase. So podophyllins are more specific for phase G2 and S. And lastly, you see the antimetabolites. Antimetabolites are inhibiting the phase of DNA synthesis. Obviously, what do you mean by antimetabolite? 
is a substance which is going to make the cell devoid of the metabolites required for DNA synthesis. So it's going to inhibit the SPs. So this particular chart is showing, schematic diagram is showing you four different drugs which have got specific actions on particular phases of cell cycle. And I take you to the next slide to continue this issue is those drugs which act on the specific phases of the cell cycle are called cell cycle specific drugs. So I am abbreviating it as cell cycle specific that is CCS, cell cycle specific drugs. And the cell cycle specific drugs, they kill the cell in a particular phase. So the cell cycle specific drugs are more effective in the tumors which are growing fast. And we call those tumors as the tumors with high growth fraction. For example, uh, the blood tumors that's leukemias, lymphomas, these are rapidly multiplying tumors. So if, if you use a cell cycle specific drug, it can go to a particular phase of the cell cycle and it can effectively inhibit a tumor. So that's about CCS, cell cycle specific drugs. The rest of the drugs are cell cycle non-specific. So it doesn't matter to them the cell in which cell is in which particular phase, whatever may be the phase, they are going to inhibit the cell. So that's called cell cycle non-specific drug. So it's CCNS. So cell cycle non-specific is CCNS drugs. They are not too specific for a particular phase. So they can kill the cell even in resting phase. That's G0 phase also. There is no specific action on a particular phase. CCNS drugs are effective in the tumors with high growth fraction as well as with low growth fraction because they are not very specific. For example, renal cell carcinoma. Next, we talk about the cell cycle specific drugs. There is a table here which is showing you the cell cycle specific drugs which we already saw uh, in the form of a schematic diagram. But we are going one step ahead to also write the names of the drugs from each particular group. The first row is saying anti-metabolites. They are specific for S phase. I just logically told you that these are anti-metabolites. What are these metabolites? They are required for DNA synthesis. So those drugs which are going to deprive the cell of the metabolites required for DNA synthesis naturally are going to inhibit the synthetic phase, DNA synthesis phase. So it's S phase. Anti-metabolites, S phase. Some names of the drugs is cytarabine, 5-fluorouracil, 6-MP is 6 mercaptopurin very important drug methotrexate then 6-thioguanin that 6-TG also topotecan and etoposide they can have action on the S phase the second row is bleomycin peptide antibiotic and if you have the visual impression of the schematic diagram it acts on phase G2 the next row podophyllins these are also obtained from plants. There is etoposide and tenoposide here and it acts on G2 and S phase. So etoposide and tenoposide have a mixed action. They can act against the S phase as well as the G2 phase. Next, vinca alkaloids. Vinca alkaloids are spindle poisons and they are going to affect the mitosis. So that's M phase. Amongst vinca alkaloids you have vincristine, vinblastine, Vinorelbin and also paclitaxel and docetaxel. So this is about the cell cycle specific drugs. Uh, I like to revise the anti-cancer drugs this way because you remember only four groups and say, say that they are cell cycle specific. So all rest of the groups they become cell cycle non-specific drugs. Cell cycle non-specific on the next slide. Here again we have four rows. The first one is alkylating agents. They may be nitrogen mustards, they may be alkyl sulfonase or they might, might have some other structure. Examples of the drugs here is busulfan, cyclophosphamide, meclorethamine, melphalan and thiotepa. Then on the second row we have cisplatin and carboplatin. The third row, still more alkylating agents which are nitrosoureas, I have put them separate. That's BCNU, CCNU and methyl CCNU. When we shall uh, go to the individual discussion of the drugs, 
we shall expand these forms BCNU, CCNU and methyl CCNU but at present you can remember so it will be easy to remember BCNU, CCNU and methyl CCNU. The last row on this particular chart is anthracyclines. What are anthracyclines? These are anti-cancer antibiotics and you have adriamycin, doxorubicin and tonorubicin. So these drugs in general are cell cycle non-specific drugs. Let's move on with this chapter. Now to classify the anti-cancer drugs in a traditional way, let's just make a list. What are the various classes of anti-cancer drugs? Number one, alkylating agents. They contain nitrogen mustards, nitrous ureas, alkyl sulfonates and miscellaneous structures. Number two, anti-metabolites. Three, alkaloids. They may be vinca alkaloids or they may be podophyllins. Next, anti-cancer antibiotics. That's the anthracyclines. Or you can also write bleomycin peptide antibiotic. It's also a antibiotic. But you divide anti-cancer antibiotics into two. One is bleomycin peptide antibiotic and the second one is anthracycline antibiotics. Next, number five are the hormonal agents which could be useful in the management of cancer and next the miscellaneous agents. So this is how we complete the classification and as per this classification the first group of anti-cancer drugs are alkylating agents. So let's start our discussion with the alkylating agents and uh, do a little bit of about alkylating agents. What is this uh, action mechanism of action and why do we call them alkylating agents? We we'll call them alkylating agents because they produce alkylation of the nucleophilic groups on the DNA basis. Which is the nucleophilic group which is most commonly affected is the N7 position of guanine. So that's very specific for alkylating agents. They affect the N7 position of the guanine and they produce alkylation of this particular group on the DNA basis. When this group gets alkylated the effect is this cross-linking of bases and there is abnormal repairing of the bases and finally the DNA strand cuts down, it gets broken down so that's breakage of the DNA strand. The alkylating agents are nitrogen mustards, the cyclophosphamide, chlorambucil and mechlorethamine. There are nitrosoureas just few minutes ago I said let's remember the short name first that was BCNU and CCNU now I'm expanding it BCNU is bischloroethyl nitrosourea from the word nitrosourea we are getting two, two alphabets nitroso N and urea U and this is why you have NU at the end and what is this BC is bischloroethyl nitrosourea. Another short name for this drug is carmostin. The second one is lomostin that's CCNU and it is chloroethyl cyclohexyl nitrosourea and there can be a methyl derivative of CCNU which is called methyl CCNU. Then you have alkyl sulfonates which is called busulfan. The next number of drugs there acting as alkylating agents is cisplatin, carboplatin, dacarbazine and procarbazine. 